everything been coming along? It's coming. It's coming. It's uh, it's one of those things that you just you're never really truly prepared. You just always try to make the best of it every single moment. So it's coming. Thanks so much exactly. for taking some time to to meet with me and to kind of go over some basics. <laughs> of course, I'm glad to help. What's the biggest challenge you're facing right now? Um, I think everybody, you know, time, time is a constraint. Um, I'm getting the hang of the logic games and I feel much more confident, um, especially with the, the training plan that I'm following. Um, I'm following the two month training plan and I'm, I'm, I'm probably just finished all the logic games and those sections and I'm so sorry. And I'm going back again to, um, to kind of redo some of those that I've missed and, and double check where I went wrong. Um, So time is a big constraint for me. And I think the biggest other challenge is um, not feeling flustered with it. You know what I mean? It's not just the the time itself, but it's like seeing the clock go and and you're just trying to rush through and you forget some of those inferences that you know that you've, you've, you've missed, but you, you're trying to get through it so quickly that you just uh, forget about it. Right. Right. Do you feel like you have some kind of step-by-step process to help you slow down? I do. The problem is that um, I feel like I'm so slow in my my thought process that it's just like I can't seem to speed it up fast enough to to get through some of those logic games quicker. I wish I could, um, but I'm feeling a little I'm feeling a little frustrated with myself that I can't get through them quicker than I than I I'm getting them the majority of them right. I'm just not getting them through with enough time. How long have you been working on logic games for? Well, I've started my whole prep um, originally back in January, so it's been a while, and I'm tired of it. It's one of those things I'm just I'm exhausted mentally, you know, going through over the same items. And then once I started your course a couple about a month and change ago, I kind of re- hit it, the reset button. I was like, okay, let's just follow the two month training plan. And so I've probably been with about I don't know a couple of weeks in Logic Games. And I'm ready to move on, but I'm, I don't know at what point should I move on and should I just stick to it until I actually get it, until I actually move past that time constraint. So that's kind of where my challenge is. And my questions, especially, especially for you, is how long do I stay in logic games and when do I move on? Um, because I don't feel 100% confident, but I don't, I do want to feel that I... I can, I want to be able to grasp the other sections just as much Um, because originally I thought to take it here in June, but it's coming around so quickly that I might just have to push it to, to August. Well, you can move on without moving on, right? So you can progress into logical reasoning, but still keep practicing logic games along the way. Okay. Okay. You're talking about hitting, making a reset on your logic games. Mm-hmm. I think that's okay. valuable for you, especially if the other methods you were using just weren't working for you. And now you're feeling like, hey, it's going slowly, but you're getting them right. Yes. So that's where we look to increase your efficiency on games. And you can increase efficiency through making more inferences up front, as well as from reusing your previous work. So any hypothetical scenario that you draw. So I do have a question for you. What happens in the cases where you are stuck and you didn't see the inferences and what I've kind of been doing is going back and YouTubing those prep prep tests because I don't know where I went wrong. And so I, I want to identify what, where um, the problem and, and so I've been going back doing some quick, you know, Google search on YouTube and seeing other people's uh, explanations of the game. Um, Do you think that's a bad idea? You think it's a good idea? What are your thoughts? Explanations can be really helpful. Just Mm -hmm. Don't use them as a crutch, meaning okay. you want to work through a lot of it on your own first, struggle with it on your own, see how you can solve it. Okay. And then if you feel like you can't solve it, of course, or you are curious about there being a better way, then yes, of course, you can look at the explanations. Just keep in mind that the explanations are often just one person's so-called perfect way of doing it. And they may okay. not always be realistic under test day timed conditions. One of the cool things about the logic games in the course is that we're walking through it live, like you would actually solve it, mm-hmm. making the inferences along the way in real time. Not like you've done it before, right before okay. class, and then already know exactly how to do it. Then okay. that's, that's cheating, right? So we have to make it more realistic. And in class, we're walking through it, interacting with students to 
see how different people might approach it. And there's not always one best way. So keeping that in mind as well. No, I do like the classes and I do like the the interaction and other people's point of view um, of how they be, they came up with some inferences that the instructor might have not seen or a, a different way of approaching the game. Um, I find that I've been more in line with the presenter instead of the the teammates on the other end. And so it's nice to see like, well, I didn't even think about you know, putting six games together at the beginning and then starting, I, I wanted to move quicker. So um, maybe making two and then down the road, making a few more. So, but it's, it's helping. It's helping. I just feel like it's a little slow. And um, like I said, I'm just tired. I want to be, I want to be done with it. <laughs> I, I, feel I, feel like you, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. <laughs> it's like after so many years, so many years and so many months of just like, how many more hours am I going to put into this? And so that's where I'm at right now. I just want to, I want to get ready for August. I really want to get uh, through a lot of the items and, um, you know, do well. I, re I really do. I, do. I want to do well. And, and I think a lot of your explanations really do help. Um, I went back through this morning and looked at some of the basic, basic uh, fundamental stuff that you had on there. And it does help. And it does help just to kind of reinforce and kind of re-motivate you to get back on track if you've lost a little bit of enthusiasm into the entire uh test <laughs> makes sense i'm glad the videos are helping i'm glad the course is helping i sense that logic games you feel well, maybe a little bit discouraged the energy is a little bit lower in that department mm -hmm. it is i'm feeling that way right now but it like i said it's it's one of those things that i know that there's a big section of it a big a big portion of it. And now, um, because I, I am probably going to push it from June to August, I know there's going to be that fourth section. So I don't know what's going, you know, that experimental section. I don't know what will it'll be. It'll be, will it be logic games? <laughs> will it be? And it's like, and for me, the most frustrating piece is not knowing, not knowing what to expect. So it's like that unknown for me is very frustrating. Um, so that's where I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm almost like, well, let me just pull the bandaid and take it off in June, take it in June. Cause I know what, at least I'm getting myself into, but I don't know. What are your thoughts? Do you think it's best to take it in June and then retake it again in August? Or do you just think that wait and then take it in August? Well, you can't do the whole thing in two months, right? I know that you, you had prior exposure to the LSAT and you said back in January, starting then before getting into the course and using my training program, but it sounds like you're not where you want to be at with logic games. You're just mm -hmm. going to start getting into logical reasoning as a focus now post reset. My intuition is telling me that if you're considering August, you should probably go for August. You can still okay. apply at the beginning of the cycle either way and give yourself okay. that additional two months to maximize your score. But if the logic games energy isn't where you want it to be right now, but you also recognize you got to keep pushing ahead, then like I said, move on without moving on go into logical reasoning, make that the focus in the short term, just to help bring your energy level back up while continuing to mix in some logic games on the side and continue practicing that. Gotcha. I know that obviously nobody wants to do the experimental section. There's no benefit <laughs> to you for doing it, but right. it's going to be there. And that's the price you're paying in this case for getting the additional two months of prep. The good news is that that price isn't actually a very high one other than the uncertainty of knowing what's going to happen on test day, meaning which additional section will you be getting? Where will it be placed? You don't okay. know that. You're just basically spending an extra 35 minutes that isn't going to be scored. But since okay. you don't know which part it is, you've got to give it the same effort regardless. But this isn't really a new thing. This was always on the LSAT. The flex was just a temporary right. removal of yeah. that extra section. So they're bringing it back in, but everyone's going to be in the same boat and you just got to practice accordingly. So build up your endurance a little bit more than you would otherwise by taking practice tests with the four section format, not the three. Um, how often do you think um, practice tests should be taken? Once you've built a solid foundation, okay, at least once a week, okay, maybe twice a week if you have more time in your schedule, but it's more about the review you do after the fact than just getting more tests under your belt. And that's, I think, where I'm feeling like I'm, I haven't gotten enough practice tests just because I'm still feel, building those foundations. And so I'm feeling like I'm almost a little behind, but I don't know. That's, I'm like, well, should I just like start going through them? And I, I, I guess 
Um, my my questions are more in line of should I just continue with the um, the schedule and move forward that way, or should I deviate from it and start the practice tests and just putting them in there throughout the week? Well, your schedule is going to change if you go for August, right? You've been doing it on a two month plan before. Right. Now we've got to lengthen that because you have the additional two months. So you may mm -hmm. want to switch gears and do the four month program instead, spread it out a little bit, give yourself some more time. You don't need to start practice tests yet. If you're curious about them, yeah, sure. Take one and see how it goes, but take the results with a big grain of salt because okay. you're still building that foundation. You might yeah. alternatively <laughs> just do a logic game section timed or a logical reasoning section timed. Once you dig into logical reasoning, see what that's like and build it up. Then even if you start taking practice tests in mid-June, you could take a full two months focused on practice tests, even just one a week. That'll give you roughly eight or nine, which is a good okay. amount of practice. And if you want to increase it significantly, then just do two a week if you have the room in your weekly schedule. Gotcha. Um, what else? I have a list of stuff on my and my questions here. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> um, testing accommodations. What are your thoughts, um, your general thoughts on testing accommodations? Do you think that um, the LSAC does pretty good about accommodating, you know, especially extra time um, based on, of course, circumstances? Or do you think that they usually deny those kind of requests? They used to deny them all the time. Uh -huh. They got sued several times. They've since become more liberal in granting them. Okay. So I'm curious, do you think you might qualify for them? Um, maybe, I think, um, you know. We'll see. We'll see after I submit all the information, and and we'll see what they what they say. But based on the um, the criteria, it looks like I might. But I don't want to use it as a crutch. Um, I still want to use. I still want to continue with the you know the thirty five minute sections and move forward that way. But I, I guess. I going, getting back to, I want to be ready and prepared for what's coming versus like, well, now I'm going to have this, all this extra time that I don't need. And I'm just going to be sitting there and, and psyching myself out for the next section. There's probably not a lot of downside to getting extra time, especially if you think you might qualify okay. extra time. Accommodations are typically time and a half. Some people get double time. So time and a half brings you from 35 minutes per section to 53 minutes per section. Okay. You can probably benefit from it if you think okay. you might qualify. I would get the evaluation, see what a doctor says, see what a professional says, and give LSAC as much documentation as you possibly can to support your case for it. And okay. let, the, let the evidence make the decision. And LSAC does sometimes still deny, so you can appeal with more documentation or another okay. evaluation. But especially if you're finding right now that you're having difficulty finishing the section, obviously more practice will help you get closer to finishing the section. Mm -hmm. but if you, as a test, you could see, hey, if I had 53 minutes, what would change? You'll probably right. have an easier time finishing the section. Right. Uh, so I would go for it, start the process now. It sounds like you're already compiling things, but yeah. see what happens. Don't assume you're getting the accommodations until you actually do. Okay. But if and when you do, then you can practice with the, that extra time, either time and a half or in some cases, double time. So if you finish a section, hypothetically, say that you do get the testing accommodation and you finish the section before your allotted time was, is up, do you just have to wait there until it's up or do you have to, can you move on to the next section? You do have to wait. Okay. This is not a problem that a lot of people run into just because the, okay. LSAT, <laughs> is so, is, the LSAT is so strictly timed. And you know, personally, I'd aim to have a buffer of three to five minutes at the end. Right. by design. So I move at a pretty fast pace. I might flag the toughest questions, especially in logical reasoning where they're individual and not related to each other. I'd flag those, skip them, come back to them at the end with those three to five minutes as a buffer. And then going back, giving them a second look, giving them a few extra minutes and see if I can make it click. Perfect. Um, let me see if there's anything... Any advice you can give me, you know, anything that you can provide me that is going to re-motivate me to move on with this test and continue with the rest of the LSAT and uh, law school journey. Yeah, I would say keep coming to class, go to the okay. study groups, form connections with others, hear their stories, share your story, build friendships, 
that can be some of the most powerful ways to build the motivation to know that you're not going through it alone. Okay. Yeah. I just, I just feel like it is. And so it's one of those things I was like, okay, well, I will get back to studying one more time. <laughs> Every, everyone else is in the same boat as you. Everyone else is in the same boat as you. So don't, don't go through this alone because you're not. Okay. okay. Um, I did have one final question. Um, your LSAT mastery dashboard, um, the tracking your numbers on a 12 weeks plan. Um, is that something that you'd recommend doing now with building the fundamentals or waiting until you start taking some of the practice tests? You can use it now. Yeah. Okay. You can use it throughout your entire journey. This is just a way to track things because right. Otherwise, you're not going to know where you were at last week and you want to measure your energy level and see how it relates to the amount that you're putting in. And this also helps you focus on what really matters. And that's right. what you're putting in because it can take a while to get the results out. The LSAT right. is tough and accuracy percentage is not the only thing to look at. Okay. The more work you put in, the more work you will get out, but it may not happen in a day or a week. It could take weeks but just keep putting in the work, keep showing up to class, keep doing the problems, keep watching the videos and you will see results. Thank you. And like I said, I appreciate it. I appreciate having um, you as a resource and, and the team. It's, it's very helpful to, to rely on somebody that, that has that experience and that, uh, that can walk through things in a very simplistic manner and not complicate things with adding different terms. And it's just like, it's just what it is plain English. <laughs> so I like that. Of course. Um, um, but yeah, like, like I said, I'm excited. I'm excited for, for the future, but it's one of those things that it is frustrating that it's like, okay, two more months of hell. Let's, let's make it happen. Let's do this. Okay. I can do this. Um, but you know, you make, you, you make time and, um, my family's great about, you know, allowing my, my, <laughs> my time when I need it, but it's prioritizing and it's, it's really, it's helping me build, but at the same time, it's, uh, um, I feel like it's always that you're always wanting to do more and, and for your family and others. And it's like, I just, it's a time where you just have to be selfish almost. And it's not part of my personality to just, take that extra time for myself. So this is, I guess it's almost a double-edged sword. It's like I'm forcing myself to be selfish. <laughs> know that this will serve a larger purpose. So it isn't selfish in the end. Yeah. And also I want to ask you before we wrap up, just what if this didn't have to be hell? What if this, what if this could be fun? I hope so. <laughs> I wanted to, I want it to be fun. I want it to be that way, but it, I don't know. Like I said, it's so many years of trying you know, this will be my third attempt. And so, so many years of trying, so many years of getting denied. And it's like, I just want to be over with it when I move on with my life, you know, get into law school, finish law school. I'm ready to, to move forward into my career and, and everything else I want to do. And so I feel like this is just one of those stepping stones that has been the hardest for me to achieve. And so that's, I guess that's why I'm like, it's hell because it just, three years of hell seems like a long time and now a couple more months and a couple more months. So I do want it fun. I do want it to be fun though. And I, and I, and I have learned a lot from it and I have, I've learned to be patient. That's the one thing that I've learned. I've learned how to be patient and slow down. But when you live in a really fast paced world, you almost want things quicker and, you know, and it's like, as you get older, your mind doesn't grasp things as, as it used to when you were straight out, sorry, straight out of school. <laughs> I hear what you're saying there, but you have the opportunity here with this additional two months to transform your experience of the LSAT and what law school can be like as well. This is, this does relate yeah. and you can set up the structures here so that your LSAT studying will inform what you do in law school after the fact. And you're, I know you've been at this since January and we're speaking now in May but you're restarting now with this new two-month program. Mm -hmm. It can now extend to a four-month program. And so you're actually not even close to the end yet. So you still have room to change what this experience can be like. And there are people in the courts who've been down this road before. There's the instructors, there's the TAs, there's students who've been in the course for longer than you have, and you can benefit from their experiences and see how their framings can support you as well. Oh, good. Um... And any of your, your TAs, uh, non-traditional students, or do they all, um, are they all pretty much traditional students that, that, you know, 
that a lot of their education has just been school. I mean, school and work. Um, Cause I, I, I do want to find people that know exactly the type of things that I have to go through. You know, it's not necessarily like i hear stories, but the stories are like, okay, big deal. You go to school. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Ooh, I have like, I don't know, 50 other items that I have on my plate, but besides just school, I you know, but I, I just really want to make sure that I can hear from those, those, those people, those instructors, because they'll, they'll help me, I think, see things in a different light. Yeah. Ask them their stories. There are a number of people. I'll send you some names and you can attend their classes and see, but I'd say, honestly, most of the people are not mm -hmm. the so-called KJDs straight from mm -hmm. kindergarten to law school. Yeah. Uh, I'd say probably the majority of them have spent some time in the workforce first. They have work obligations, they have family obligations. Yeah. So talk, talk to them. I'll send you a Welcome. few people's names. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course, Claudia. It was great connecting with you. Yes, thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. And and again, I appreciate you and your team and um, all of the resources you have out there. It's, there's so much that it's just like, okay, I'm going to focus on one, one thing today, <laughs> but it's, it's good. It's better than no resources. So I appreciate that. Of course. Glad to help. Reach out if you need anything. I'm happy to help you out. Will do. And again, thanks for taking some time today. Of course. Have a good one. You too. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.